I love the stories about Jesus. What He did, where He walked, how He talked, how He shared. Today we, we're going to look at one incident, one important, deep, deeply teaching event in Luke chapter 5, if you have your Bibles. We'll find out more about who we actually are. Thank you, Lord. So I'll give you a minute to get there. So I'm going to read a longer passage, uh, which I don't always do. But here we are, Luke ch chapter 1, chapter 5, sorry, verse 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, that's Galilee, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. You're going to have to do something about this, okay? Make sure the monitors are off, please, completely, and then turn, turn down the house. doesn't need to be so loud. Thank you. Okay, that's better. Move back a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's good. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, that is Peter's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So here is a scene where multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of people have come to hear Jesus because he's been healing the sick. He's been um, curing and teaching day by day. And people from the entire region have come and they're pressing in so close to him. Of course, we know that some want to touch him and get the healing directly. They're pressing in so close to him by the water that he was being driven into the water slowly. And there's two, two boats pulled up on the shore. The fishermen weren't in them. And he just gets into one of the empty boats. So we sat down. Uh, he got into the boat, which was Simon's, and then he asked Simon, who was washing the net and mending the net, to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So Jesus' heart was to reach the multitudes, and he got into and commandeered a boat. But Simon answered, uh, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. What a wonderful story. What a wonderful scene. So let's just walk through it a little slow, a little, little more with some kind of consideration for the scene. Some Bible scholars say it's really good to put yourself in the scene as if you're part of it. So here's Jesus. The fishermen are mending their nets. The boats are there. 
And they'd been out fishing all night long. Of course, that's when you catch fish in Galilee. You don't fish during the day. You only fish at night. So they'd been all night long out fishing. And what did they catch? Nothing. How did they fish? They fished with a net. And you never fish alone with a net. In Galilee at that time, we know from his historians and archaeology that it took two or three fishermen to cast the net out, and then you would troll for the fish, and you would bring them in. And so Peter was out all night long. That's like us coming home from a 10-hour work day all night long. You come home. What do you want to do when you get home? Yeah. You want to get something to eat, you want to lie down, you want to sleep, and you want to prepare for another night's hard work. But what does Jesus do? He doesn't ask Peter, oh, Peter, would you mind if I get into your boat? Jesus steps right into the middle of Peter's life. He didn't ask permission. He not only did that, he steps right in the middle of Peter's life, which is represented by the boat, it's the only means by which he had to make any money, support his family. Jesus stepped right in the middle of the only thing that Peter had to survive and make money. And what does he say? Do Launch out. And can you imagine Peter, a hardened, salty fisherman, thinking, look at this carpenter. He's telling me what to do and where to go with my boat, and I just finished a shift and didn't catch anything. You can imagine him thinking, sort of, who is this guy? So Jesus began to captain Peter's lifeboat. Who's the captain here? of the only means that Peter had for livelihood. Jesus very subtly gets in the boat and says, let's go out there and let's catch fish. Peter says, I tried all night, but at your word, Lord Jesus, you're in my boat now, but I'm not the captain anymore. I'll listen to you, and I'll launch out. And Peter says, at your word, we'll go out. Jesus was about to demonstrate what you and I have experienced or maybe will experience if you let Jesus into the boat. Because Jesus tells everybody when he gets into their life, let's launch out into the deep and do something. Mm -hmm. Our personal experience of Jesus is not waiting on the shore and listening to him teach from a boat. That's good. That's Jesus' heart is for the whole world to hear him. But what does he really want to do here? What does he really want to do here? He wants to get into my boat. And he wants to look at me face to face. Some people call it life on life. He wants to get into my life and give me life on my life. Face to face. That's Jesus' heart. He's happy with teaching the multitude, but he wants to get into my boat, and he wants to go to work with me. I said, I'll, I'll get into your skill. I'll get into your education. I'll get into what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, if you just let me in the boat, I'll direct it from now on. Peter was astonished enough to do what he said. And what happened? 
Nevertheless, at your word, Jesus, whatever you're telling me and talking to me about today in my job, my family, my situation, my whole life, my destiny, my purpose, what am I doing? Jesus wants to talk to us about that right where we are. And then he wants us to do what he says. Because he's not done by us just doing what he says. So Peter's boat now becomes Peter and Jesus' boat. He now has a partner. It's no longer the Peter boat. It's the Peter and Jesus boat. How about you? How about you? How about me? Do I have a Collins and Jesus boat? Yes, I do. I have a Collins and Jesus boat. Exactly. And I'm wanting to listen to him and do what he says. And I'm wanting to launch out into the deep because I don't like the shallow waters when I'm trying to fish. Because there's no fish there. Are you wondering sometimes, what about this God and that God and this God? What about this? You said this. I, oh, I heard all about you, Lord. Well, you know what? You need to launch out a little deeper and get a bigger catch in your life. Do you know there's a fisherman living inside of you if you know Jesus? If you've received Jesus into your life in a simple way, like Jesus getting into Peter's boat, do you know you have a fisherman in, inside you? Do you know your friend is a fisherman? This is not a special skill. It's already in you. And this is a theme that permeates Christianity to the extent that in the first century, the fish became the symbol of believers. Right? In the catacombs, when believers were persecuted and they had to meet secretly, and it still happens in many countries throughout Islam and China, we know because we talk to people who have to do this. How do they know where to meet? They have a symbol. They follow. Oh, go down here. Oh, you see the fish pointing over here? Take a left. Take a right. Take a left. Take a right. And there, there, you meet with the fishermen. The reason the fish became a symbol is it's an acronym in Greek. And each letter of the acronym, which is ISKUS, in Greek is Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. The, the first letter of each of those words in Greek spells fish. So by saying, I'm a fisherman, you're saying, I'm going after Jesus. He's my fish. He's the big fish. But at the same time, he says to Peter, now, Peter, we've met. I've called you out for the biggest catch of your life. It was so big, their nets began to break, and they had to call for two men who were going to be future apostles, James and John, to come over as partners and help pull it up. And I guess James and John's boat couldn't hold it and their boat couldn't hold it and the nets were breaking and all of the fishermen and all the people on the shore were astonished at what was going on. Why? Because through Jesus everything was created and he commands all of creation. So he called those fish to bless Peter because Peter had let him in his boat. See, it's not just a one-way thing. When we receive Jesus into our boat, He'll begin to do astonishing things. Many of you testify during these services of astonishing things that God's done. He wants to provide. He wants to display His power in our lives, in our boat. He wants to turn my boat into my lifeboat. It will save me. It will keep me. It will launch me 
into my destiny, launch me out into my future. And at the end of all this, he says to Peter, this is nothing, Peter. From now on, you are going to catch humanity. Wow. Those words were so impacting. The only comment is, they left all and followed him. Now, if Jesus were to walk in here or walk into your bedroom and say something directly to you, audibly to you, and make an appearance to you, I bet you you'd follow him too. Don't be afraid. From now on, you can catch people. You. Me. We had that great testimony last week of what happened between me and my nephew. I went fishing. It was easy. He was already wobbling in the net. People are going to come to you that are already in the net and they're going to say, please, haul me in, will you? Will you catch me? Bring me in. Because Jesus has made you a fisher of men. After catching, what do you do? You've worked hard, you've hauled in the net, you're bringing it in, and you discover, I can't do this alone. I need my fellows in the ship, fellowship. This is a fellowship. That's why we don't say church. We say fellowship. It comes from an old English word, two fellows in a ship. Why? I can't haul people in. I can't catch South County. I can't catch the Berkshires. Je Jesus wants us to catch, but he wants many hands on the net. I remember a... Uh, uh, a missionary from Guatemala coming to our basement when we were the, the basement church 40 years ago, 35 years ago, in our home. God was just doing a work. People were just coming from all over. We didn't advertise or do anything. Just coming in. What's going on? And Jesus would touch them. And this missionary came down in our basement and at the end of our gathering service, he said, I had a vision of this huge net full of fish and it was being hauled in here. Way back at the beginning, that was one of the things Jesus wanted us to do. Put our hands on a net and begin to pull it in together. Now, on a net, Is only a net when it's knotted. I wonder why you're sitting next to somebody. That's the relationship between believers who have enough agreement to join in the work that we don't actually do. Jesus is doing it. And so we wash the relationships. When Jesus came along, they were washing the net and cleaning the net. So we make sure our relationships stay clear and clean here, full of forgiveness and love. If I step on your toe, forgive me. That's what a knot is all about. Why? Because we're the net to catch the fish. And if there's not a purity about what we're doing, the net breaks. Uh. 
You see, it's not just about us. It's about all of them. And so the church as a fellowship has a strong net, a dragon net. It's what it's called at that time. Jesus said, you might remember the scripture, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Do you remember that scripture? He told his disciples, if I be lifted up, he was talking about dying on the cross, if I be lifted up before all humanity, Jerusalem, front page, New York Times of the day, everybody had heard about it all over when it happened. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But you know what? I looked up that word in the Greek. It's not draw. You know what, you know what word it is? He said, if I be lifted up, I will drag all men unto me. I went, yes, fishermen. From the very beginning, he was saying, my, my dying on the cross for humanity, I, I want to draw, I want to drag in the harvest of people. I want an abundance. I want to be in their boat. I want them in my boat. I want to be in their boat. I want us to launch out in the deep, and I want to do signs, wonders, and miracles and live a life that you could only dream about if Jesus isn't in the boat. So I believe Jesus was lifted up, and I believe he is in the process of dragging the Berkshires to him. But you know what? Yeah. I can do a few, and I have done a few, but you must do the work of a fisherman. You don't meet people just to meet people. God doesn't guide you to certain groups and certain places just for the heck of it. If you have a fisherman mentality and you have this fish in you and the fisherman's in you, then you will delight to love people and to listen, to see. Are you swimming toward the net? Or maybe you just need to know there is one. Many people talk about revival. Many prophets have come to New England. The Lord spoke to us 40 years ago that there's going to be a tremendous move of God that no man could, have, could, could handle, could do. It's going to be from God. But you know, they, they still need to get in the net. <clears throat> The church is a boat, but we go out, and real disciples go fishing. I was thinking of printing out a, something from my refrigerator as I was reading through this. Gone fishing. <laughs> you know. Gone fishing. Jesus is always wanting to gather humanity. But he is waiting for his fishermen and fisherwomen to have a good, strong net together. And that net is you and me. We talk about in the Berkshires is wonderful. Farm to table. You heard that term? Oh, I believe in farm to table. Well, I believe in humanity to the Lord's table. Amen. Gathering people and presenting them to the table of the Lord, which is the communion. Coming in to eat and to drink and to be present with the presence of Jesus Christ.
said, well, hallelujah. Amen. I have a lot more, but I'll probably save it for next week. I want to encourage you. The picture of Christianity that the media presents or some big evangelist speaking to crowds, Billy Graham, these types of people, they don't get the job done. He, I worked in the fishing industry for three years on Cape Cod. And my job, amongst others, was nobody wanted to go out in the harbor when the big boats came in and unload the fish that had been down in the hold for five days. Because the hold was, well, it wasn't as deep as this room, but maybe 12 feet, packed with ice, 12 feet of ice and layers of cold fish eyes staring at you. But me being the young buck that I was, I said, I'll do it. Just let me know when you're coming back in. So I'd row out to the boat. All the fishermen on that boat were so tired. They, you know, sleep, just, they all disappeared. The hold would open. I'd get on my oil skins, grab a big three-pronged pitchfork and jump down the hold, and the crane would come down. And I'd start a whole day's work to unload this darn thing. And I'm thinking, they want to preserve the fish. They don't want to catch the fish and throw them on the deck. The precious people that God wants you to catch in your part of the net are precious people that need to be preserved. Now, the fish were iced down. We do the opposite. We warm them up with the love and the forgiveness of God. <laughs> right? But, but, but that analogy stuck with me. It's, it's a great harvest. Now, I'm not selling anything. You're not selling Jesus. You love people so much you want them to be caught up in what you and I are caught up in. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And we join hands in the net. And wherever the catch is and the harvest is, we bring them in and we preserve them. We introduce them to the beauty and the blessings of God. We pray with them. We don't leave them on the deck. Like the relative that I caught in the net last week and brought to Jesus, a young man, what did I do within 24 hours? What did I do? He moved. He left back to go back home. What did I do? Started to get down in that hole to get him out. It's like, okay, how are you doing? I gave you a Bible. Start here. Here, try this. Text me. I'm praying for you. This is how you just do the boom. Just follow up, follow up, follow up. Because it's the beginning of a whole new relationship face to face. Because Peter said, I'm done with this kind of fishing. I want to go with the fishermen. fisherman why don't you say that to yourself I'm a fisherman it's not up to the pastor it's not up to the evangelist it's not up to some TV or media or YouTube it's up to me I'm a fisherman I'm salty Hmm. Here 
we are, church. Every not so relationship. God puts it together as a net. Yeah. We are going to next week mount this on the back wall. And we're going to have little ribbons for you to tie to this net those you want to come and find Jesus so that you can become a fisherman. And Pastor Cheryl will be speaking about the, the, the vision we have from the Lord. Simple and clear so that we won't ever forget from now on, we are fishermen. Making it real. Supernaturally real. So, why don't we close in prayer?